This is the GSD Podcast, and this is your host, Jeff Kushmerick. So right off the bat, um, what are people doing wrong with this process? Like when, when you hear about stuff and you're like, oh man, I can't believe they're doing it this way. So we're recording. It's uh, my landscaper outside and Monica Trevetti. Uh, welcome. You might hear my laundry machine. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of noise going on right now. So I will yeah. speak louder to get over this. But Monica and I have been friends since, I think we either did a meetup or a panel or something like that. Uh, yeah. like a year ago, right? And yeah, and a lot of people might not know Monica. Because Mo- Monica is what I call a LinkedIn lurker. She never posts. She never comments. She consumes it all. Mm-hmm. I, used I used to, to post, post more. more. Yeah, I've been a little quiet. I think that's good. Some... I think that's. I, I have this network of people that I that are just in the background doing the hard work, not writing generative AI LinkedIn posts. Yeah. I don't, I'm not doing that. I've definitely, things have definitely got busier in this past six months. Yeah. But um, I still enjoy LinkedIn. I comment on posts that I think are fantastic. Yeah. You never commented on one of my posts. So so I have to do some thinking on that one. Still to come. Maybe this one. (laughs) Um, So um, quick, quick, you know, we don't have to do the, you graduated college and we got to this point thing. um, (laughs) That can take forever. <laughs> oh, so if I had medical or today we're talking about CSQLs. So uh, talk about why this is important to you and what your current role is. So I'm uh, the Senior Vice President of Global Client Services at JLL Technologies. So JLL Technologies is in corporate real estate. So technology for all Class A buildings, yep. um, industrial, retail, you know, everything. Um, and I lead the customer success team, the implementation team, professional services, and global support. Yeah, so you're you're not busy at all. Right. Right. <laughs> That's why I haven't been posting as much, uh, but I still love LinkedIn. <laughs> I, I think it's a badge of honor. You, you and Mark Holland, uh, my, you put you guys right in that category. So um, I, I, I gave uh, Jeff from GGR a list of people to go talk talk to that won't go down the same talking points and all that stuff. So you're on yeah, the- and- so, <laughs> so uh, um, but of course, just don't talk anything CSQL because that's that's our thing. So, no, uh, that's only us. Yeah, right here, right now. Right. So right off the bat, um, what are people doing wrong with this process? Like when when you hear about stuff and you're like, oh man, I can't believe they're doing it this way. Yeah, I think most people start this in a silo. They're like, I'm the customer success team. I'm going to start tracking my customer success leads, yep. and I want credit for it. I would say pump the brakes right there. Take a lot of steps back and start working across the table yep. with sales, with marketing, with product. Um, you do have to work across the table. And whenever I start with an organization, and I've done this a few times now, yep. is Usually in the startup or even here at JLL, you have to still follow the same path. Have a good uh, plan, but you need to get the buy-in. And it has to be from leadership too, especially if you're going to bring comp into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you had to do it from scratch, is this you get together, you get sales, you get all the groups together and everything. Uh, to be honest, this is more of a newer process for me, or maybe the terminology okay. is. I used to think like, no, CSMs, they just did this. Or what I see a lot of is they tee it up and they send it over to an ADR that kind of like closes the process out to not deal with, um, you know, procedural stuff like uh, contracts and um, procurement people because they're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> So what I've always done is I do start with the team. So an example is when we were at Building Engines before we got acquired. I always asked, you know, what what are you guys doing? You're having conversations with clients, the CSMs. And then if something comes up, how are you letting sales know? It's email, it's Slack, it's walking over to their desk when everyone was in the office. No tracking whatsoever. 
And from leadership perspective, the question is always, what value is customer success contributing to our business? Yep. There's your value. We need to tie that to revenue. So creating the process was just as simple as we're not going to use email Slack. We're going to track it in our CRM. We do it in Salesforce. Yeah, I went on mute because of the, uh, you might have heard my landscape or kicked it into extra gear here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. You know, a lot of leaves starting to come down. (laughs) Already? It's going to be 90 tomorrow. Um, I'm still wearing long sleeves though. So are you. AC is on. AC is on. It's yeah. not a good look with the short sleeve. It's very much uh, foreman, you know, like <laughs> foreman of a plant. You don't like wearing the button downs with the short sleeves? <laughs> I have a bunch upstairs. That What's that service? They send clothes to you and you try the stitch fix or whatever? Oh, yes, yes. And I tried them on. I'm like, oh, I don't like this at all. It does not, it does not look good <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. and, and then my family's like, no, no, don't send them back because it's more to send it back, whatever. And I literally not touched at all. Like I, yes. I put them on a couple of times. I'm like, nope, not doing it. Not doing yeah. It. Yeah. Um, where was I? I don't even know this where I was. It's going to be quite that. This is, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Th- so, exactly why. I mean, mostly startups, when customer success starts, you're always like, how do I tie to revenue? How do I show value quick? This is a way to do it. So, we track everything in our CRM, Salesforce. Leads are passed to sales. There's a field in there that actually tracks the customer success manager's name. And then the opportunity is closed by sales. There's a couple of different paths. Yep. I know people have asked, oh, does the CSM get comped? Does sales and CS fight about it? Of course they do. But in our first, I mean, that's inevitable. It's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, in our model, the first year we did it, okay. sales got comped. That makes sense. They got that first deal and then the initial upside, ramp up plans and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and they also got comped on the CSQLs first year mm. because we didn't really know what it was. We had no target. We had no understanding of, is this going to work? Um, so they did it. And then second year, you start to see what's happening. And now you can do sort of things like bonuses or spiffs. Yep. And then when you work to get into a comp plan, you need to get that in the budgeting cycle. Like yeah. comp plans are planned now for next year. So if you want to put this in place, you have to so do it now. On the comp plan, st- oh, there's a lot of questions. On the comp plan stuff, are, are you following like a s- classic 80-20 split? And then a part of that 20% is where, s- where this DSQL stuff comes in from there? I've, I've worked, worked in an org like, like that. that. Right now, we're not doing that. Um, but I have worked where we set that up, or is 80-20 and all the additional revenue. But at that time, the CSMs were also owning renewals. Renewals, right. Yeah. Okay. And, and quoted, quoted on upsells. The the process that I'm used to, the, the starter, like my first SQL, um, goes usually like this. AE closes deal. Uh, I always use, if you've heard the 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 uh, the Yum Brands metaphor that we did at Virgin, which was we sell into Yum Brands. The first brand that we get is Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? So we're working Kentucky Fried Chicken. If Kentucky Fried Chicken needs three extra seats, the CSM just gives does the three seat thing. Like why bring in the AE to do that? They should mm-hmm. be out whale hunting essentially. Right. Yeah. But then it gets into like, Oh, Taco Bell's interested. Right. That to me is the CSQL. Yes. Way, right. Okay. Yeah. So we're in line on that. Absolutely. We have the same thing in properties. Yeah. Clients are buying and selling properties and buildings all the time. If, if they, they call us and say, we just bought three other properties in our portfolio. That's, that's not, not a CSQL. We're, We're adding, adding square, square footage, footage, but it's business as usual. Yeah. Now, if they're on a different product and they're using ours and our CSM is adopting and getting them to use more and they're like, hey, we really like what you're doing. We're going to bring all of this over right. from a competitor or something else. That's a CSQL. Adding modules, that's a CSQL. Interesting. Modules and stuff. Well, new modules. Okay, let's discuss. New. Mo- modules I usually like to give to the CSMs um, and they just take care of it. But like if if it's at the level of like a new product, a new product, yeah. not a feature, but like, oh no, we've got a new line. It's got a new, it's got its own product manager, all that stuff. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in our world, the modules are like a new product manager, okay. like sustainability, sustainability. Yep. or something, something like that. that. So that would be a new module, module and, it and it would be, be a CSQL. CSQL. Got it. Got it. I'm going to start firing questions because I'm looking at the time because we've been BSing so much here. I know. Okay, um, go ahead. And I'm, I think we'll get a lot more out of these questions than my questions. Um, so are you ready for this? Because I'm going to tell you. I'm ready. This person, I'm going to keep her name off of this, um, is, is super detail oriented, which I love, by the way. So okay. I'm feeling she's creating a process right now. How does marketing, expansion programs, sales, account managers, and BDRs, and CS all work together so that the customer and company are at the center and each team is working together without stepping on it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple racing so, chart, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I this, this is where... You have, you have to have that, that plan, plan across the table, table that I referred to before. Yep. So success planning with sales. Our CSM and sales teams are BFF. And okay. that's not how it started. Yeah. Actually, it was the total opposite. <laughs> and getting them and marketing aligned too. I mean, they're lockstep. And I think a lot of it had to do with sales actually originally thinking, Oh, no, you're, you're going to get comped for my, my deal. deal. And we, we said, said you're, you're one. one. You're going to still, still get compensated. compensated. We, we just want, want the credit. credit. Yeah. So yeah. When, when they, they saw, saw that and they, they saw, saw more leads, leads coming to them, them it, was it was a no-brainer. No right. Right. So, so but we track the, everything. Use the magic lead. words, which is they're going to get the comp, right? Which is their carrot versus using a stick approach, essentially. Exactly. Exactly. And and you have to know who, you know, know your audience. Know the, the team, team members you're, you're working, working with, the leadership you're working with. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's not going to work, work for you. you. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's also like, what's the current current sales leadership like and things like that, right? Correct. Because, you know, sometimes you just can't get that bill passed. Um, this computer over here. And some of these, I mean, we kind of went over, but we can go, what are the criteria for attributing a QL to CS? Do you have an actual criteria for that? So I guess, um, that, and this would take down on the like, no, I was already in there and I knew about X and Y, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it would have to be net new from the CSM perspective. Okay. It's, it's not, not incoming. incoming. Like we're not, not order takers. takers. Yeah. So, so net new, new modules, new, new product, product lines. Um, anything, anything along those lines, lines make, make it qualify. A, a demo? demo I don't call that a qualified lead. Does, does CSM, do CSMs demo in your world? They demo. Yeah. Yeah. Like if there's a new product or if they're part of the sales training okay. every year, what we go through. So we have our like kickoff together, but um, demos, I don't really consider that unless if the client afterwards says, you know what? Yeah. I want to move forward with this. And then you bring it, then it's a qualified lead. At that point. Yeah. We're not going to put in every demo. So funny. That was the next question. Do you recommend qualifying CSQL as a demo booked or tracking by closed $1? Okay. That's so we question. do track, we, we track, track leads, leads and then we, we also track, track closed one. one. So, so as part of monthly, monthly reporting, reporting, we're looking, looking at, at both because we want to see the conversion rate. rate. And, then and then why, why did we lose that opportunity? opportunity? What was the reason? Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, so same as sales. sales. Yeah. I, I mean, that's because... When I was working on forecasting recently and things like that, I'm like, yeah, this is the same as sales. Like, it's the same. Let's use the it same is. percentages and Salesforce qualification criteria. Get over yeah. to the next phase, all that stuff. Uh, but we're not comping CSMs for, like, building a pipeline. Correct. You're right. Yeah. It gets a little weird, which we'll see if we have time to chat about, it, like, having a number for expansion per right. month based on year over year. And let's, let's table that one because I can get a little ugly. So. Um, but I do want to, we talked a little bit about this, but what comp models have been most motivating and beneficial examples are built into bonus, spiffs, competitions, gamification, et cetera. I think it depends on the stage that you are when you roll this out. So every time I've done year one, you're literally throwing a target out there. You have no idea what your goal is. I set up a goal and we hit it out of the park. Like. The revenue that the CSMs added in year one was about 20% of the total revenue that came in for the business. 
which, which I don't think, think it was, was ever mentioned, mentioned that CSM, CSM contributed in that much. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it, it makes, makes a difference, difference in the stage that you are. I would say the more mature you get, year two, year three, it should be part of your comp, like bonus structure. I'm um, looking at two really good questions. Um, um, I feel we slightly covered one, but not the other. Name the top challenges, one to three challenges themes you've identified while creating the metrics um, oh. and how you, how you resolve. Metrics? The Wait. CSQL metrics. Um, so when you're creating the metrics to be reporting on and, and yeah. things like that, were there any challenges? I think that year one stuff that you talked about is probably the biggest one, but, but then yeah. adjusting from going there. Yeah, so we created a dashboard so you can see month, every month what CQLs are coming in as lead. And then we created close one from there. Okay. And we also looked at time. So that was an iteration. Like how long was it taking for a lead to close? Um, and then how much revenue was that actually increasing over time? Those are some of the metrics. I think some of the challenges were less metric oriented. I feel like once you know what you have to do, you measure it. The challenge was around your CSMs are not used to doing this. And so you have to train them to actually level up for this. Good job the them, by the way, because I I love when, well, anyways, I'm curious who, who trained them. So I've always, I mean, my team was small when I was leading the team. So I actually did the training on how to have the conversation. What are the types of things that you bring up? Um, we also joined sales training for certain things. That's, yeah. you know, so it, it just depends because we don't want it to be like a sales motion. You still want it to be a customer success motion. It should be organic. It should be a conversation you can have with a client. You're not just throwing a product in, you know, just to talk about. So it was a combination of both and just tweaking, shadowing calls, making sure, you know, I would sometimes bring them up and they would follow along. And now, you know, they're doing great at it. So, but I think that's a tough thing for customer success managers that have never done it before to put themselves out there. So if you're going to put that out there, you really need to look at that. Second is like we talked about sales and CSMs working together um, and not fighting over each one. So, so setting, setting that, that metric, metric in the, in the beginning, beginning yeah. on how you're going to get comped is important. So that was part of the next question, which is how do you recommend handling the disputes about who found the lead? It sounds like you have the metrics in place, but it probably might have taken you some pain to find out which metrics to get there. Absolutely. I mean, in, in the, the beginning, beginning, it was, was more like, like, oh, well, I talked to the client about that six months ago. So that's my lead. But they're still getting the credit now in your model. Right, right. So as long as... Or the comp. If, so. Right, they're, they're getting, getting the comp. CSMs, CSMs are getting, getting the credit. Yeah. Um, over, over time, time, you want to move that where CSMs, CSMs are actually getting, getting the comp, comp too. too. Yeah. And yeah. that yeah. might cause some challenges, which, which we'll, we'll get, get there. there. Right. Done it before. Yeah, <laughs> I, it might have been Jay, uh, Nathan, but he, was, he had posted that. And I think once you get into like the 50 to 70 million range in revenue, that the majority of that new revenue is coming from this source, actually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're not using, it's our existing clients. So if we're going to pass a lead onto sales, the likelihood of that closing is much higher. We already have the data to back that. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. But Parker, oh, sorry. I, was, I never know whether I mentioned people's names because I think it's better not to mention people. But uh, <laughs> um, I would love for, hey, whatever. Somebody can, somebody can write me and tell me next time. But, uh, um, I love this question. If a CSM and sales rep are both at a meeting with a customer who's interested in buying more, who gets the credit? <laughs> um, and then it's on a train that leaves Chicago at 11 o'clock. Right. <laughs> and the other one's coming towards it. Yeah. So this is the type of thing where they need to work together, right? So we have clients where the CSM is really the front person. And the salesperson is the person that does the contracts. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and then we have vice versa. Um, and every relationship is a little different. So we haven't had that recently where there's been that friction. Um, but if it's net new, I'm not going to lie, it's probably going to end up going to sales. So I'm going to ask this, but it uses a 
a trigger word for me. Um, wow. Okay. How do you use CSQL and CSQAs to build a customer centric company? Uh, yeah, customer centric's my trigger word. I know. I, know. I was just, just going to say, <laughs> I, mean, you, I, don't I don't think, think those, those two things, things are going to create the most customer centric customer. Um, from yeah. Aspect of things. But let's go for the using a CSQL to build a customer centric company. I mean, you know, my thoughts on customer centric, everybody should be customer centric. It's part of the gig, right? Like, it's like, right. you're not doing that. It's like, it's, hey, me posting, like, by the way, I shower every day on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> like, oh, good. Yeah, exactly. Because you should. I know. It, innately, if you are putting this program together for CSQLs, Everyone, Everyone is, is working, working towards, towards one goal, goal right? right? Ensuring, ensuring that, that clients are sold the right, right thing. I thought you were going to say ensuring that your revenue increases. Well, well that, that too. too. <laughs> but that yeah. makes it customer centric and business centric automatically. automatically. Um, so, so oh. I hear you. You hear me? Okay, good. Uh, uh, but I think innately with CSQLs, you have you sales, sales marketing, marketing, and CSMs, and CSMs working, working together, together right? right? They all they have all a success, success plan. plan. They're, working They're working with the with client to increase, increase revenue. revenue. Sure. So, and, and we're, they're all we're, on the we're, same we're, page. We don't live in a communist country. It's okay to talk about increasing revenue. Right. 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 We're, all, we're all in it for we're making the growth of the business and, and all of that and bringing the client along. A performing <laughs> company can treat its customers better. Right. right. And I do, I do think, think that... that if you do have this program in place, it's going to prevent the fighting that could occur if you don't have it. If CSMs are going to do their own, sales is doing their own thing, marketing is doing their own thing, and then everyone's reporting their separately on a monthly reporting. Yeah. So you might as well work together, and then you're creating customer centricity on a Yeah, I think what I'm hearing out of this is that if you treat it like it's it's just an all-in money grab, and everybody's all in it for themselves, they're not thinking about the customer. No. And, and you know, pushing people out of the way just to make sure you get the commission and all of that other stuff versus right. a nice, well-defined journey. It's got where who works on what, make sure everybody's taken care of on the finance side. And if that's happening, then sure, you're, you're treating your customer as well, which you should be doing. Yeah. Sometimes when you do focus a little bit more on the bottom line, yes, sometimes... The customer centricity um, mm -hmm. kind of goes away a little bit. So. It, it, it does, does, but I, I think, think for CSMs, CSMs we're, we're, I always say we because, because that's, that's where I came from, from. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> is, is that, that we, we are, are thinking, thinking about, about what's, what's right, right for the right customer. customer. Yeah. And, and so, so that's, that's the voice with the rest of the folks on the team that we're all kind of going, I totally, I don't even know what I'm saying. Did I hear you say that sales? Is not thinking what's best for the customer. I know I, I did, did just say that, didn't I? I? Um, it's okay. Sometimes they're not. You know, it's like my dog, right? My dog always wants food. It's a lab, right? We all love the lab, right? But we just know it's got this little thing that it'll do anything to eat, right? Right. That's all. <clears throat> That's all that we're saying. And I think I would be, I mean, I would be totally called out if I said, oh, no, sales is always thinking about the customer. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like we don't want them to be, we want them to make sure they're selling to the right customer and everything like that. Yeah. But like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, why the military will have certain people that they'll hire as psychopaths because they know they're psychopaths, <laughs> right? Like, we need a psychopath to do this job. Yes, yeah, I'm you not do saying, need this is a metaphor. I'm not saying salespeople are or narcissists or psychopaths or uh neither am i <laughs> no no i would never say that right but you do need different opinions at the table right so you need a little bit of that it's a good balance it's a good yin yang game because exactly the we in your conversation which I'm, I'm i come from more of the services background that's um than the, the we aspect of things um you know sometimes the uh, the CSMs can a little over index on the customer happiness thing and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And, I and I think, think there's a good balance down. that needs to happen between, between all three. three. Yeah. So now that we've managed to piss off everybody but the CFO. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't imagine what's going to come out of this. 
I, I, I think everything is be totally, Hey, listen, I keep it real. This is, this is, this is real work stuff, right? So this yeah, is, how this it is happens. what happens every day. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, and you're working for a larger revenue company and this is, uh, you know, if people don't like that sort of commercial aspect of stuff, then startups are very much, you know, very valiant in those efforts and, and, and things like that. So, so now that we yeah. Yeah, kind of pissed everybody off, um, parting tips, words of suggestions. My, My biggest, biggest parting, parting tip, tip is, is if, if you, you are going to go down, down this path, path come, come up with a plan, plan but make sure you're working with other, other parts of your organization, of your organization before, before you put, put anything in place. In place. Um, it's, it's very, very important. important. And, and getting and leadership on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think most people, people know that, but, but sometimes you get into an organization or even just want to start something and you want to prove like, this is going to be amazing. We're going to just go and do it. Don't, Don't be, be a bull in a china shop. shop. <laughs> I have a funny story about that saying in a minute, but I'm not going to waste more time on <laughs> funny stories. Um, so it's it is un, it's 90 degrees, but it's fall now. Like uh, yeah. kids are going back to school and everything. What, are, are, what's your situation on that? Do you have kids going back to school? Yeah, yeah both, both my, my boys, boys just went, went last week. week. And so what, is, uh, so what does this mean for you now that the kids are back in school? It, it means, means the, the craziness, craziness begins. begins. Like every, every activity, activity, trying to feed them dinner between like 20 minutes of one activity versus the other. Yeah. Um, we have a slow roll this week and then it just goes insane starting next week. So which would you prefer the you're driving them everywhere in the summertime versus the it's a little bit more scheduled, but a little more crazy with the amount of stuff going on in the fall time? I like, I like the, the schedule. schedule. Oh. Yeah. That's, That's how, how I, I am. am. I, I like, like to know where everybody is. is. In the, the summer, summer, sometimes I have no clue. I'll get a call. Can you take me to play basketball at 11.30 in the morning? I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. It's I'm on a call. <laughs> I, you know what you need? You, what you, I highly suggest getting is a, is a child that can drive. Because that's been... Yes. Yeah. Nice. I don't know how... Three much, more years. I remember my, before, I was like, oh, my God. Like... My daughter's going to learn how to drive. I'm so scared for it. And then by the time I finally hit him, I'm like, here you go. Here's my keys. Like, I don't, yeah. like, I'm just like, take care of it. And and now another thing for you to look forward to is I used to get up at like five o'clock every morning and then go to bed at like nine and everything. The kids are up later. You're, you're staying yeah, up till like 11 to go pick them up and everything like this. But not now. Now I'm, it was the weekend. I was like, if you want to, to my middle daughter, if you want to stay out late, you've got to convince your older daughter to get my sister to go pick you up because I'm not doing it because because the cucumbers are on the eyes the um, melatonin is in I'm taking I'm going I'm going. jealous I'm not there yet yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward, forward to that time <laughs> anything fun planned besides driving your kids to 15 events during the week for the fall for the fall no yeah, we're going away for Thanksgiving we're going to um we do our like yearly beach, beach trip, trip so we're going to Mexico well that's Amazing for yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Other than that, no, just snowboarding in the winter and wow, that's yeah, it's the life. That's awesome. We're awesome. Yeah. Right, so um, so I'll post all the links to your uh, social profiles so people can see updates from 2017 or 2015. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I gotta be better about that. I, I will promote, promote this. Don't worry. <laughs> that's great. No, looking forward to it. Yeah.